Hi everyone. So uh, a few people have sometimes asked me about my microphone setup, what kind of microphone I use, and hopefully this will be a decent comprehensive guide that isn't garbage. Uh, I've been carefully adjusting all my mic levels, so I think everything should be okay. Anyway, the microphone that you're seeing right here right now that you're listening to is a Cardinal EV Blue microphone, and uh, or I should say it's a blue um, Blue is the company that makes it, so I guess you guys are probably familiar with Blue. As you can see, it's using an XLR analog connection, so all of the audio setup that I'm using right now is, um, in fact, analog. And um, as you can see, I'm using a very, very cheap old pop filter, which is being held together with some bit of rubber band. And um, that this is a very important thing about the sound that's going to come into your whole setup is going to start with the microphone. Your microphone is going to govern your... Well, it's it's the entry point for your sound. If you're going to use an XLR microphone, that means that it's probably going to be a powered microphone. That means that your mixer panel or whatever you're plugging it into is going to have to support uh, phantom power or something of that sort. Anyway, you probably, if you don't know what phantom power is, you're probably going to have to ask at the uh, store when you buy it. Um, but in any case, yeah, this one is a phantom powered microphone. And... The thing about this microphone it is using a, I believe it's called a cardioid um, pattern, a ca cardioid input input pattern, which has a lot to do with uh, how this thing picks up sound. So if I just move this pot filter out of the way, um, and I this thing is in is a unidirectional microphone, which means that it's the opposite of an omnidirectional microphone. Omnidirectional microphones will pick up sounds from all different directions. So if I start moving to the left. And moving to the right, as you can really, really tell um, from that audio gauge just how much less it picks up noise from the side. So as I move over, over to the right, you can see that it's much, much, much less um, sensitive. So even if I just walk over and talk over, right, I'm still staying equally close to the microphone, but the microphone has a very, very small pickup pattern. So the microphone um, is extremely important. And this pickup pattern is very, very important because it's going to allow you to reject a lot of the background noise that is in your studio. And then, of course, we have the cheapo pop filter. And the cheapo pop filter prevents a lot of the pop, 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 pop. So this really, really masks out a lot of the windscreen. It, it, it acts as a windscreen and prevents the microphone from picking up a whole lot of nasty um, wind blowing into the microphone. So this is a very, very important part of your setup. Uh, if you don't have this microphone, if you don't have this part set up properly, well, you know, it, it, not much else. You really can't fix much else. So number one, make sure you have a microphone with a cardioid um, omni, uh, a unidirectional, not omnidirectional pickup pattern. This is the best for broadcasters because it screens out noise outside. It rejects noise off to the sides or most of it, as well as a pot filter, which will take care of a lot of the mouth breathing sounds. Um, and so, okay. Now, another thing is that everything that the microphone, in fact, if we, here, let me show you in my, I, I've, I've got a diagram which shows the, um, the setup that I'm using. So it, you, as you can see, is that starting on the left side, we've got a microphone behind a pop filter, which is going into a preamplifier, and I'll point out what these things are. Then it goes into a first stage gate, then a compressor, which, and what the compressor does is the compressor is like an automatic gain control, so it automatically adjusts your volume and if the sound's too loud, it starts to tone it down. And if the sound's not loud enough, it brings it back up. So it flattens the dynamic range. It means that the, the level sounds be, can't be too loud and they can't be too quiet. So if I start maybe talking you know, a little too soft, it starts to raise the volume. And if I start shouting to the microphone, it starts bringing it down. So it keeps everything at relatively the same level and generally it can help prevent clipping. Then we have an EQ, which uh, makes me sound a little less nasally and sound a little, adds a little bit of bass, brings down some of the treble, and uh, maybe keeps the mid-range as is. And then another gate, and then after that, it goes into the mixer panel. And I'm listening to all of this on my headphones. So there's no latency. And then, of course, um, part of it is also split off, which goes into the PC's input um, device. So this is a very, very important thing that you have your headphones because you're going to need to figure out when you're setting up your microphone, you're going to need to wear your headphones and listen to just what you're broadcasting to people. So, you know, have your headphones plugged into your mixer panel and have a splitter that goes off to your PC so you know what other people are hearing. Okay, so anyway, I'm going to get into the actual setup now. So... 
we have the microphone, which is plugged into the XLR plug. And all of that is going, let me see if my camera can reach. As you can see on the leftmost channel, you can see the XLR plug going into there. That's where it's going. And uh, this microphone is has phantom power. It supplies 48 volts into that XLR uh, adapter or XLR plug. And so it's powering the microphone. It's, uh, that, that's the, it's per supplying power to that. Plus the raw signal is going into um, that plug as well as there's the trim control. And all of this stuff, uh, all of this audio that you're hearing right now is actually going out of um, the auxiliary port. And uh, this is how, so, so the thing is that whatever's going into that microphone, as you can see, I've actually made it so that in my case, on my mixer panel, it's muted. It's muted and the volume sliders all the way down. I'm only using that one channel there to amplify the sound of my microphone. And so it's going to go out, out of the auxiliary jack on my microphone. So you may have a dedicated um, preamplifier, but in my case, I'm going to do a little bit of extra stuff to it. So in my case, I don't, I only want to use it to preamplify the microphone and split off the signal and send that over to um, another few devices. Let me just get my cell phone um, flashlight going. Okay, and so um, we've got several things going on here, and I've got a big tangle of cable. Well, my hands just snagged in my uh, in my headphone cable. Okay, so a whole uh, a few things here. So we're looking at two devices here. We're looking at the at the very top is the green box, the Joe Meek MQ3. I'll explain what that does in a second. But underneath it is a Behringer Multicom Pro XL. You don't have to have this exact device, but it's a four channel device and all four of these channels do the exact same thing. It's just that each one um, is can process a separate signal. All right, so what's happening is we've got these four uh, channels here. So, so I'm only using the first two channels in this particular setup for the microphone processing. And I'm using the, the Multicom Pro XL acts as a noise gate. I'm using it as a noise gate and not much else. So what a noise gate does is if I don't say anything, you'll probably notice that the sound signal goes pretty much down to like just dead silence. In fact, you can see on the peaks of my, uh, my input meter on the top left of the screen, it goes down to negative 70, which is negative 70 decibels, which is pretty darn near silent, pretty good. And you can also see on these noise gates, there's, there's these little indicator lights, the li little ind indicator blinky lights. You know, if I just shove that aside, there you are. You can see that as I'm talking, they turn green. If I shut up, they turn red. So what a noise gate does is what these noise gates are doing is these noise gates, if I if this if the input signal is not loud enough, the gate closes and sends out silence. So this is necess very necessary because if you don't have a noise gate, you're going to be getting a lot of background noise. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to just put down my cell phone camera for my cell phone light for a second and I'm going to shut off these noise gates. Okay, so I've got the noise gates um, deactivated. I just turn the knobs all the way down. And as you can see on the, the silence, if I just say nothing, we're getting about negative uh, 45 to negative 50 on the dB. So we just gained like negative, we just gained about 20 dB from the noise gates alone. So if I want, uh, I'm gonna just turn up one of those noise gates until the little green light on that top left corner goes red. And now we're down at negative 70, which is pretty good. The other thing is that I don't just stop when it turns red. I give it another couple clicks just to make sure it really seals off that, that sound. So it seals off that sound link or that, that sound leak, I should say. Okay, so after it has gone into the noise gate, the, the gated signal now goes into the Joe Meek MQ3. So this Joe Meek MQ3 can act as a mic microphone preamp, but I'm not using it as a preamp. That's what the, uh, the the whole mixer panel business was for. It's to bring up the the the, the purpose of a preamp was to bring up the XLR signal to the level of line noise. So from a microphone, very low level microphone noise to the point where it's at line level. And line level means, you know, means at the same level that you'd normally hear devices, like if you're playing off of a CD player or a tape, to, tape, a tape player or, you know, just what you're used to, home audio or studio level. It's at a level that which, uh, which we can actually use it. So after it goes into that left 
um, noise gate we now have going into the MQ3. And there are, as you can see, there are multiple stages. There is the amplifier stage, the microphone amplifier stage, which has that first knob. And I'm going to leave that where it is. Then we've got a compressor stage with these three knobs. And then finally, there's an EQ and then there's an exit amplifier stage as well. So I'm going to, so the thing is that the compressor is, as I said earlier, is the automatic gain control. It's the automatic volume knob setting. And what I've done is I've set this compression up like all the way up. <laughs> we've got tons of compression going on and the attack and the release knobs those are the, the, the delay knobs which are set to the minimum so that means that the compressor kicks in as soon as the volume level goes too high and it drops off as soon as the volume level drops below the maximum now if I turn off my compressor altogether so if I turn off my compressor you notice that my sound the sound is very very different if I start shouting into the microphone you're gonna hear the microphone buzzing right you're gonna hear a lot of distortion uh, you can see it like it starts to clip out and you can even see on the right hand side that we're getting the that we're hitting the red line we're hitting the we're, we're getting into the red zone on that that compressor uh, because the thing is if I start shouting in the microphone it's uh, it's not gonna bring down the, the level at all and then also conversely if I start speaking really really softly it um it also just kind of doesn't really pick me up very well at all right like so so that's a problem that that's what the compressor does the compressor is adjusting the dynamic range of the sound by making it so that the sound isn't too loud or too soft let me turn that sucker back on okay there we go so much better and then of course the other one is the eq so i'm going to turn that off So this is without the EQ, and as you can see, a lot of the bass has kind of leached out of the sound. The, the vo voice is not quite as rich, um, but you know, again, it's it's a. I've adjusted it until. Well, my suggestion for adjusting an EQ is. Just as you talk to it, like, and you're listening in your headphones, you'll probably realize that hey, I don't sound like this. Adjust it until it sounds to you the way it does in your head. Is what I would say because the thing is that when you're talking, your sound. Your your own voice is going through several layers of bone and and through your sinuses and whatnot, and so yeah, it's going to change the the characteristics of your voice to you. And so what I would suggest is uh, just adjust that thing until it sounds to you the way you sound to yourself. And then finally, there is an so there's, as you can see, there's like we have the um the the output amplifier stage. Now that finally goes out to the last noise gate and the reason why we have another noise gate is because if i don't say anything you can see that that on that second noise gate that the light is still green which means that it's still letting sound through and the thing is that when you amplify um as if you amplify the sound you know because i i do have amplification stages it it will add additional noise it'll add yeah you can see that we've got like negative 70 let's see yeah, it's about nine minus seventy on there. I think if I turn this down, yeah. So what I did is I I adjust like okay. So this is another thing, right? Is I've I've adjusted the other one so that we have that noise gate which comes and closes off the sound. Now. One thing I want to say as well about setting this up is when you amplify, um, there, there's this, okay, there's a concept I should explain to you and it's called, I would call it the noise floor of a system. So the noise floor of the system is the ambient noise, which your microphone is picking up as well as any line noise, any noise, which is being introduced by your analog devices. So if I don't say anything, you can see that the, the, the levels go down to negative 70. That is our noise floor. And so now what we're going to talk about is how to minimize the noise. We, we want to actually, what we want to do is we would want to do something called maximizing your signal to noise ratio. That means that the ratio of signal, that means you talking has to greatly overpower, or it must be much greater than the noise that is inherent within your system. And on top of that, we have to deal with a thing called clipping. So clipping is whenever you start to hear, well, you guys know what clipping is. This is like when I start shutting into the microphone and it starts buzzing. You hear that kind of a rattling, buzzing sound, that distortion. And so clipping is a thing that actually has to be avoided um, on every single chain. 
uh, on every single link of the chain. So let me just turn off that, uh, that flashlight on my phone to save the battery on it. And we'll go back to the diagram. Okay. So now that we're on the, this, uh, this diagram here, um, Oops, let me get my OBS to stay in front so I can read the diagram. Okay, good. So we've got the microphone and then we have the preamp here, right? So we've got the preamp. Now, right here at the microphone level, you can have distortion. If you shout too loudly into the microphone, like the microphone itself has a certain dynamic range of how loud of a sound it can take before it starts to just clip out. Um, there are very, very fine mechanical parts working within the microphone and there is a certain level, uh, there's a certain amount of, of noise that it can take before it just cannot take a louder sound. And in which case, you, you're going to get clipping. You're going to get that distortion. It just can't generate, um, it, it just cannot process a louder noise than that. And so you're going to get clipping at the mic level. So do know, you know, like you're going to have to figure out just what your mic can take, how loud you can actually scream into the microphone. And if, the microphone is ex is exposed to any sound that is louder than what it can take in. It doesn't matter what what boxes we have along down the line. It's still going to distort. But nonetheless, we want to get as much sound as possible out of that microphone without getting any distortion. And so that often also occurs down at the preamp level. So the preamp, you're going to adjust your microphone level. Um, you're going to adjust this this level th this thing, and you're. The thing is that there's always a link. There's like a link between this preamp and a gate. There's a link between the gate and the comp and the gate between the comp and the, like there's a link between the comp and the EQ. There's a, there's links between every single, you know, chunk of this chain. And so if your preamp is up so high that your gate, you know, that, that whatever your gate can handle, if it's too high for your gate to handle, you're going to get clipping there. If your gate's amplifier is so, set so high that, you know, your comp can't take it, your comp will clip out as well. So the thing is that you want to adjust things so that um, it's not so loud that you get any clipping. And that means that you're going to have to be constantly listening to yourself on your headphones, talking in the microphone and seeing, you know, listening for, for, for distortion. So in this case, if I were to take that mic, that um, if I take my camera and here, let me just turn off my uh, little display thing here. Okay, so if I just were to grab the input knob, this is the input amplifier knob, and just start cranking that thing up. Okay, so at some point you're gonna start hearing, ah, uh, you can hear that, that buzz, right? There's that buzz. So you're literally gonna have to sing into the microphone, ah, uh, and really give it a good you know, belt into that thing and try to get rid of any, you know, any, any of the buzzing. That's what you have to do. And you're going to have to do this every step of the way. I'm not going to, I'm not going to make you endure this because it is really nasty. Um, it, it is total ear rape to do that, but you get the idea is that you're going to be singing into the microphone, adjust that knob, and then you're going to sing into the next one and you're going to adjust that knob. There's also the other thing, which, which was the noise floor. So that means that you're going to need to get one of these, um, this really, really fantastic, uh, like levels meter, which I have. So let me, um, you can, it's, it, there's a Paul, like just look it up on Google for a digital level meter, uh, by Paul Marshall. Uh, it's look one of those things up. It's donation where it's a really, really good, um, meter have that thing open at all times. So this way you can use it to check, um, how low your noise floor is. And what I would suggest is as you're always wanting, wanting to turn things up, but don't turn them up so high that your noise floor begins to climb. When you see that noise floor beginning to go up above, like, let's say, I don't know, whatever you're, whatever you're, you're willing to handle, just make sure you're not introducing more noise. So you want to amplify things up. Like you want to turn the knob up until you start to see noise and then just back it off a little bit. And, um, and same thing, you want to sing into the thing. And if you start hearing buzzing, then turn it down. And there's, there are going to be many, many of these knobs that you're going to have to adjust all, all along the way. That meant that in my case, I had to adjust the knob on the preamp so that that was, you know, just right. Um, and then, and plus the other thing you can do is on a lot of these other devices, uh, very often they'll have things where you can turn them off. You can make it so that they just go into pass through mode and they just, pl they just send their signal through um, with no adjustment whatsoever. And I would turn up my headphones and I would listen very carefully for the noise. And you, you're going to want to do this in a quiet setting. 
Um, and this will take, you know, this can take hours to set up. Uh, no kidding. I'm not kidding you that it can take hours to do a really good, to, to really find your levels and get, get your levels going. Uh, don't do this. Don't wait until your broadcast day or whatever meeting. If you have a meeting that you want to do online, like don't, you know, do this stuff, set a, set aside a, you know, a good block of time to get all of your levels set up and make sure that, you know, all, all along the way, you're not introducing more noise than is necessary. Um, and also you're doing the best you can to avoid any kind of distortion so that, you know, you can definitely, like in my case, I can definitely shout into the system and I don't get any, um, uh, distortion partly because of the compressor, because the compressor is turning things down. And also if I speak too softly, it brings it up. And while I talk to you guys on this uh, broadcast, I'm always wearing the headphones, which means that I can always tell if I'm too far or too close from my mic to my microphone. And if I'm properly in front of the microphone as well. So doing a really good analog, like a, a pro level, or I should say prosumer, which is a, a portmanteau of pro professional and consumer, a good prosumer um, broadcaster setup, you know, does take some serious time if you're going to use analog devices and, um, and, you know, just be prepared to spend, you know, a, a good hour or so. I mean, shoot, just look how long it takes me to record uh, a video talking about all of this. And so, yeah, everything in this case, I've gone and I've, I've carefully adjusted all the levels and I've shown you just a, a glimpse of how to do the adjustment of the levels. You're going to have to, you know, you're going to have to sing into the, into the microphone and just make sure you get the volume as loud as possible, but without raising your noise floor and also without getting distortion. That's, that's why it's uh, it's so difficult to get a good microphone set up. And so this is the, it's, it makes the difference between like, you can't just get a, a good microphone because the whole point of having like the, the thing is that I still need to amplify it. I still needed to gate off the X, all the, the noise. Then I did a compressor. I use a compressor. You can get, I think, um, OBS has some built-in filters for compression, but the thing is that, um, in this case, if you're going to use built-in digital compressors, well, the problem with, with the digital compressor is that if the signal's already clipping to begin with, once it's already in the digital computer, um, you know, it's already too late. You can't really, it's already distorted. You know, it doesn't matter if you turn down the, the levels or, or any, you know, it's just nothing will really happen. All it can do is it can just turn up the, the, the quieter noise. That's all it can do. Whereas with an analog system, I can process all of this audio um, in analog before it reaches the PC, before it reaches the audio, the, the A to D converter, the analog to digital converter. And, um, in that case, I can get my level to be, you know, my levels to be just right before they go into the PC, before they, they enter the digital domain. So that's why I choose to, that's why I chose to go with an analog setup. And yes, a setup like this can be quite expensive. You know, you, you're looking at 100, 200, you know, for a decent preamp, uh, for the, the Behringer, Behringer Multicom Pro XL, that thing uh, was like, you know, again, $200. That's like $400. You throw in another, I don't know, $200 for your mic. You're looking at 600. Then you throw in another 100 to 200 for the, for the Joe Meek MQ3, you know, like that's 800 bucks. Then you throw in another 100 to 200 for a mixing panel, you know, so easily you're looking at a thousand dollars for a good pro level, um, audio recording setup. But this is, you know, this is why audio engineering is a career. It's, why it's an actual thing. So, you know, I hope you guys understand a little bit, maybe gain a bit of an appreciation for what it takes to get a good sounding microphone. All right. So talk to you all later.